With Attack on Titan ending, and this show being one of those shows a lot of people start out with to get into anime, you may be thinking, what do I watch now? Even though, man, they sure did prolong this anime ending like crazy since we've been on the final season for like years. But here are the top 5 best anime like Attack on Titan, at least based on Konjik's opinion. <laughs> The most recent anime to come out on this list, Pluto is extremely awesome. Like Attack on Titan, this anime takes place in kind of an alternate reality future, and also like Attack on Titan, almost all of the characters we see are actually not Japanese. Japan does exist, and so we do see Japanese characters kind of like how Mikasa's mother's ethnicity exists, and with her home nation being Asian, but Pluto mainly has countries that don't exist in the real world, like how Attack on Titan also has fictional countries in its series. In Attack on Titan, humanity faces an existential threat from the Titans, while in Pluto, the threat comes from the powerful and advanced robots. In both series, the looming threat serves as a backdrop for the narrative and forces characters to confront their fears and adapt to survive. But are the robots really bad? That's the question. Similar to how we ask, are the Titans really the bad guys? Our main characters in this show are actually robots. Attack on Titan had its main special Titans that people wanted to kill, and this anime has seven main robots that are targeted to be assassinated. It's got a mystery going to it in a lot of ways and has a lot of plot twists. It's more of a mature anime, so if you're only into things like shonen leaning towards kids, then perhaps this isn't for you, but I think Attack on Titan should prepare you for something more mature. It's a really good show. At number 4 we have Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga feels like it's more rooted in historical settings and Attack on Titan is more fantasy driven, but they actually both share a commitment to compelling characters, intense action, and thought provoking stuff. The main character Thorfinn, like Eren, went through a traumatic experience witnessing death as a child and that became his identity where his sole purpose was to get revenge. But like how Eren appears as the enemy in his show as a titan, Thorfinn actually in a way becomes the enemy because he wants to destroy the enemy. It sounds confusing hearing that, but when you watch the show, it makes sense. This show was also animated by Wit Studio, who made the first three seasons of Attack on Titan, so it has a similar feel to it with their style of music and animation. There's also fights that have fast-paced violence and blood, so that of course is similar. I think that's what a lot of people are looking for in similarity. It's a story to get invested to. All I wanted was to be an upstanding person. This is just too horrible. Number 3, Ajin Demihuman. You know, I've actually talked about this anime a lot on this channel. It's super underrated, probably the most underrated Netflix anime of all time. This anime deals with people who every time something happens that should kill them or injure them, smoke comes out of their bodies and they heal no matter what. Kind of like how Titans have steam and they heal. These people are called Ajin, although the government hunts them down and Ajin are experimented on. Ajin Demihuman is known for its intense action sequences and battles involving the Ajin and the government's special forces, which is a common element shared with Attack on Titan. The main characters grapple with their own humanity and how society perceives them, while Ajin Demihuman and Attack on Titan have their distinct storylines and settings. They share common themes such as the persecution of superhuman entities, ethnical dilemmas, and high intensity action. Those are a lot of big words, but trust me, they mean stuff once you watch this, you'll get what I'm talking about. If you enjoyed the dark, action-packed nature of Attack on Titan, you may find Aji Demi Human to be compelling and thought-provoking of a series, and take it from me, it's one of the best anime Netflix has. <laughs> Yeah.
At number two, we have Tokyo Ghoul. Both Tokyo Ghoul and Attack on Titan are set in dark and dystopian worlds where humanity is under constant threat. In Tokyo Ghoul, ghouls roam the streets of Tokyo, preying on humans while an attack on Titan and giant humanoid things, obviously we know they're called Titans, threaten the last remnant of humanity behind massive walls. In both these anime, there exists an existential crisis. The main characters in both series, Kanaki Ken and Eren Yeager, go through profound personal transformations that force them to question their identity, their values, and the meaning of their own existence. Like Attack on Titan, Tokyo Ghoul features morally ambiguous characters. They blur the lines between good and evil. Ghouls in Tokyo Ghoul aren't entirely bad people, and some humans are more like villains. And of course, there's the violence and gore. Both series are known for this. They don't shy away from depicting brutal battles, intense action sequences, and the consequences of violent characters. Fear and survival are obviously central themes in both of these series too. In Tokyo Ghoul, characters fear becoming food for ghouls, while in Attack on Titan, the fear of titans drives the characters to make difficult decisions to survive. We've also got sort of military organizations in both anime meant to kill off their monstrous threats that play big roles in these stories. And especially with the later seasons of Attack on Titan, we see the similarity that Tokyo Ghoul has, and that's the discrimination of different types of people, like ghouls in this anime and Adinians in Attack on Titan. This show is pretty popular, but also very good. Make sure to check it out. Five years. I've waited five long years. This is my mission. This is why I learned to fight the Kabane. Number one, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. This anime, I think, kind of just needed to be number one. It's basically Attack on Titan's little brother. Both anime take place in a time where humans live behind walls to protect them from human-eating creatures on the other side. And the main character is a guy who is kind of one of those creatures, yet still human, like how Eren is a Titan, but he's not one of those dumb Titans that just want to eat people. But instead of Titans, we've got Kabane, which are like zombie type creatures, and the main character, Ikuma, is called a Kabaneri, and is used like Eren to fight these things. People also use gear that looks pretty similar to the ODM gear used in Attack on Titan, but it's different. I know this is basically sounding like a clone of Attack on Cyan, and well, the first episode kind of seems that way, but it's actually got its own story going on, and that I really, really liked. The animation is amazing because it was actually done by the same studio who did the first three seasons of Attack on Cyan. The show has two parts to it, and depending on the platform you watch it on, either one season and a movie, or one season and a second mini season. But man, this is good. Overall, if you enjoyed the action and dark atmosphere of Attack on Cyan, you're likely to find Kabinaria in the Iron Fortress to be worth watching. This show, I mean, if you like Attack on Cyan, you'll like this, all right? <laughs> but there you have it, the top five best anime like Attack on Titan. I know a lot of us are sad that this series has come to an end, but we've got other anime to watch. Move on. Okay, that sounded harsh. But let me know what you guys think. I love you, and I'll talk to you in the next video.